Hi, hi, take two besties and bosses. How's everyone doing? For those of you who saw it when live a second ago, I don't know why Facebook does this, but for some reason, depending on how I type in the title for this, it wanted me to turn the screen, but we are in the right direction now and I'm excited to hang with you and I hope everyone is doing well. You all have to let me know how you're doing, how your week is going. I just got back from Montana. I had a very quick trip away. I think I told you all this last week, one of my Dear friends, gosh, we've been friends for probably 15 years and a group of my friends, we all went to Montana for one of our good girlfriend's weddings. So we were in Bozeman, I'd never been before, but it was one of those like hop on a plane early, get there, like quick time together and fly right back in. So um, it was like a whirlwind weekend, but gosh, it was just, this is not what our live stream is about at all, but it really, I think with COVID, all of us probably have not seen our loved ones as much as we're used to and definitely have not seen friends outside of family that much and it was just such a joy to get to be with people that i've known for 15 years that i love so dearly and just such a great reminder we talk so much about creating your version of success it's literally my tagline yes i want you to make lots of money but we always talk about doing that on your terms and really getting clear on what your version of success looks like and how your version of success might look very different than mine and being with the people I love and cherishing those moments and cherishing those relationships and having the time freedom and the resources to be able to do so, that is sincerely, sincerely one of my versions of success. And I'm just feeling very lit up about that. Oh, well, this has all fixed now, LOL. Yes, now I am tilted the right, <laughs> the right way. Um, so that was easy and figure outable. Anyways, I am, I am feeling very, um, full from that and wanted to reflect that to everyone because I do think sometimes we forget to talk about that in the business space. We get so wrapped up in marketing and sales, which is what we are going to talk about today. But I think sometimes we forget about the human element and how much how much importance there is to making sure we are filling our cups and taking care of ourselves and really looking at those values that extend past money. The whole reason all of us want to make money in the first place and have most of us, the many of us started our businesses for those values and to have that time freedom and to be able to have the resources to pour into the things we care about. And I think it's just a helpful thing to keep touching, having that touch point to keep um, focus on and to not lose sight of that. So it feels important to speak to, even though we're gonna talk about something different today. But today we are going to talk about two marketing energy shifts to avoid resentment, burnout, and still get paid. And I'm excited to talk about this. This is a topic that I'm, I'm all jazzed about. I, I'm pretty fired up about. Before we do, we always give a giveaway on our live streams because I value you being here. I know there's a quadrillion places, literally probably a quadrillion places in the online space you could hang out and get your content from. So we always do a giveaway. This week we are giving away one copy of my self-study course content that stands out and sells. It is a great content course. It's a five-part course. I've literally had people take this and shift their content strategy to 10K months and tell me it's supporting them in that way. We're giving away one copy of that. All you have to do is leave a comment like Lilith did, leave an emoji, leave me a hi, leave me a praise hands, whatever you want to do. That will get you entered. We pick winners at the end of the week and we will DM you if you are the winner of that. And since so many of you are silent when you watch this, the chances of winning are usually pretty good. So that's all you got to do. And if you don't want it, you can pass it along to someone else. All right, let's dive in then to today's topic. Well, it says that sounds awesome. Well, you are in the running for it, lady. I think I think it's a pretty, it's an oldie but a goodie, a pretty good one. So let's talk marketing and the energy shifts. So I want to, I've got a lot to say on this today. I want to dive into two big energy shifts and I want to also look at and reframe marketing and the energy exchange because this is something that comes up for so many of my clients and what I find happens so often when we're looking at marketing and when we're looking at sales and for many of you who are heart-centered and passion-driven and very big givers and we understand this whole idea of we want to give value before we ask for a sale i find oftentimes my clients can get into a place where they're feeling either burnt out or resentful and they're feeling like there's that uneven energy exchange where they feel like either they're giving 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 and they're not getting something back in return or they're not getting the money they want back in return or it can feel sort of like oh almost like, um, I don't know how much to give and almost like this scarcity mindset where it's like, oh, I'm kind of don't want to give because it's almost like I want to hoard all the good stuff because I don't feel like I'm making enough money. If I give away the good stuff, like am I not going to make any money? And I think there can just be a lot um, that could come up around the energy exchange when it comes to marketing and sales. So I want to chat about that a bit today. We are going to talk about two big shifts I want to invite you to play with. I particularly also want to talk about a shift I'm seeing in the online space currently. I think so often in our world, 
we can almost get latched onto things that were true 10 years ago. I've been in the online space for a hot second. It's been six and a half years, actually seven and a half years because I started my coach training in the online space. I've been in business for six and a half years and things have just changed a lot and for better or worse, I mean, it just is what it is. But I want to talk about that a little bit because I do think with the energy exchange piece and part of what we're going to talk about with marketing and sales, there have been some shifts and I think it's helpful to just know what's going on and have awareness around that so that you're not burning down really great strategies that are working for you because you're almost like taking what was maybe true 10 years ago or five years ago and placing it onto what's true today. So I wanna chat about that a little bit and then we're gonna chat, chat, chat. I always say chat. Um, <laughs> instead of chat. I don't know. Someone tell me what accent is that? I don't even know what accent that could be. Uh, maybe it was a character I played back in my acting days that I don't know about. Anyway, um, we're going to chat. We're going to chat a little bit about the energetics of this as well. So we're going to touch on this in a bunch of different ways. And I hope this is really valuable for you because I want you to really embrace marketing and sales and to see that there is a way to lean into this without burning out, without feeling resentful that will allow you to get paid. And I think in our online space, so often the pendulum swings when it comes to marketing sales. And I don't know, I don't even know where we're at currently, but I know when I started, it was very like heavy on kind of the real marketing, like market, 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 like hustle. Um, what's his name? He has an agency here in New York City. Um, I can't even think of his name, but really in that kind of like hustle culture mentality. And then it swings to the like, marketing is bad, selling is bad. Like it should just be all energetics mentality. And I want us to find the place that's true in the middle, but also really see marketing and sales as a simple foundational practical truth for your business and the more you can find ways to relate to your marketing and sales that serve you and to embrace it and to lean into it the more you're going to allow yourself to have the version of success we were talking about and the money that supports that version of success the more you're swinging on either side of that pendulum the more you're either going to you know hustle side of things is going to have you be in the burnout resentment but if we're all on this kind of like almost hating on marketing and sales side where we think it should just be all energetics the more we also start to also resent marketing and sales and really sabotage and put up a wall against the very thing that allows that money to come into your business. Lilith well, says we're still on the outs right now from what I see people talking about in that pendulum swing. Um, Lilith oh, says that sounds awesome. You mean on the outs in terms of kind of that energetic side or do you think on the outs on the hustle side? I think we're on the outs still where it's like marketing and sales. I think that's what you mean. Almost like marketing and sales is a bad word. Um, I think we're kind of in that phase right now where it's almost like the practicals of business are like not cool right now and it's only cool to talk about things that aren't practical in business and how you make money from like manifesting and energetics and hi. I fully subscribe to that. I believe in mindset. I believe in manifesting. I believe in energy. I believe in all of that. And I do also believe in the neutral truth of business and the practical foundation of business. And that if you're a business owner running a business and selling things as a business, as opposed to, you know, more for fun, um, there are just some simple practical truths that are true for us as business owners and what it means to be a CEO and what it means to be a sustainable business that makes money for the long term. Lilla says, yeah, on the energetic side, like it's all about energetics, a thousand percent. And hey, like, again, I love the energetics, y'all. And I think we want to find that place where it's like, where can both be true? Where can we see the energetics are true and also being a business owner has just some practical truths. Both both get to be true. We want to find that place in the middle. Usually whenever the pendulum swings, there's a happy medium that we can land on. Lilith says, exactly. Both are valid. Both are needed. And I appreciate you for saying that because I think that's what happens when the pendulum swings. We start to make one thing wrong so that we can validate the other, right? The pendulum swings from hustle culture to energetics because hustle culture we don't want. But then we make that very middle wrong. And what I want us to see here is we can validate both. If we're saying some practicals like marketing and sales are beneficial for you as a business owner, that doesn't subtly mean energetics are wrong. That doesn't subtly negate energetics. That simply means there's room for both to be true. Two things can coexist at the same time. I would even say there's an, an argument for some of that hustle to be healthy and that having energetics and having the flowy side of things and having the business practicals also doesn't negate the truth for maybe a little bit of hustle even being a great thing. Anyway, I'm going to take us down a rabbit hole, but I'm going to bring us back to focus here, but that does feel important to speak to. So let me pull up my, you know, I love my notes here. So the first 
thing I want us to understand and the first energy shift I want us to play with is really looking at what is your relationship with marketing and sales and what is the way you're approaching your marketing. What I find happens for a lot of my clients when they're starting to feel really resentful and when they're starting to feel like there isn't that even energy exchange and to preface, I do think with marketing and sales, right, we're really looking at creating an even energy exchange. If we're thinking about marketing, if we're thinking about showing up and delivering value, right, we're looking at creating an energy exchange in which we pour out energy so that we can be open to receive energy, right? Like it is a cyclical thing, just like money is energetics, right? And when we want to create money in our life, we pour out money knowing that when we pour out money, we open ourselves up to receive more. We do so intentionally. We don't just like throw money at the wall and hope money comes back in but we know that money is a slow a flow and when we release money and we give that money energy exchange for something that also opens us up to receive something in return the same is true for you in business the same is true with marketing and sales and i think that can be a very helpful frame to look at this through because i think so often we think it's a really one-sided thing or we've talked about this in this group so much we can often think that marketing and sales is really about a transaction and i really want to invite you to start thinking about this as an energy exchange and an even energy exchange, but realizing that when we're saying an even energy exchange, that doesn't mean one for one. It doesn't mean as a business owner, I put out one piece of marketing and that means the even energy exchange is now you give me back something in return, right? We're talking about even energy exchange, not tit for tat, which is a very different thing. And even energy exchange would be as a business owner, when the energy exchange I'm asking for is something of monetary value that is possibly really large, what is the energy I can give up front in exchange for your trust, for that relationship I'm building with you, for you to be available to think about giving me energy in exchange for that, that larger sum of money? Right? We have to start to think about this as an even energy exchange, but if it's an even energy exchange, again, it's not a tit for tat. It's not like, I did a live stream, now you owe me money. You got on a call with me, now you owe me money. That's not actually an even energy exchange. That's an expectation. That's, a, that, that's a, I don't know, that's like an unhealthy relationship. That's like going on a date with someone who expects something in return, right? That's not an even energy exchange. An even energy exchange is understanding if I, especially as your the the energy exchange you want monetarily in return for your services and offers, as those become larger in price, the higher ticket your offer is, generally speaking, the more energy we want to exchange, the more value we want to exchange up front to allow for an even energy exchange of that monetary um, exchange on the other side, right? Is this, is this tracking? So really want to be clear on that point. And one of the things I want us to play with then, and one of the first shifts I want to invite you to think about is starting to think about your marketing and sales through this lens as an even energy exchange, but understanding what that means and starting to think about marketing as creating this energy exchange and starting and building relationships, which I know I've talked about a thousand fucking times, but I'm going to explain this in a slightly different way today, because what I find happens so often and where a lot of the resentment comes from and where a lot of, I find clients either getting to that place where they like want to hoard all the value or where they feel super depleted because they're almost like over giving. Um, which we're going to talk about that a little bit more later on, but I find what happens so often is the mentality has switched and and I think this is where marketing and sales gets that bad rap, especially when we're on the energetic side, where marketing is really being seen more as client hunting, right? I'm hunting for clients. I'm prospecting for clients. I'm fishing for clients. I'm, it, And it's not really about an energy exchange anymore as much as it's about that transaction. And this is, I think, when the energy exchange gets really skewed. And when it starts to feel yucky on your side, especially if the pendulum is swung to the energetic side of things, right? And we're trying to move away from the hustle culture or the bro marketing side of things. Of course, marketing and sales is going to feel like a gross fucking thing you don't want to do when the lens, the way you're looking at energetically marketing instead of that even energy exchange and that way to start and build a relationship, to build that no like and trust, to be able to allow for that even energy exchange we're talking about. If instead it's really seen more as a transaction and sort of like this thing I have to do to get a client, to go hunt for a client, to go find a client, to go prospect, right? All of these are, if we think about those, these are very transactional words and phrases and they're, they tend to be very one-sided. 
this is so crass if you have kids in the room like ear muffin this is a little bit crass but i think of this we were talking about the relationship example where it's like just because you go on a date with someone you don't owe someone something right like that's not actually an even energy exchange i think about that a little bit here it's like think about that mentality if someone is going out on dates thinking like oh well, i'm just gonna try to get me some right like that's not an even energy exchange that's kind of a very one-sided transactional energetics and mentality i think we can all track on that and i think unintentionally that can happen in business a little bit and i think that's when marketing and sales starts to feel crappy when especially as people who are heart-centered who are passion driven who are service driven who care about our people when we're really seen it or being taught through the lens of this is what you do to get you some right to get a client to hunt down someone right like we need to go into a facebook group to like go um almost like through that mentality of like, I'm hunting for clients, right? That does feel very transactional. There's nothing really energetically that feels great about that. It does feel very one-sided. Um, Lil says yes. Um, so I think that's just really helpful for us to notice and to see, hey, let's just hit the pause button for a second. And just to check in with where from an energetic standpoint and from a mindset perspective, how are you relating to your marketing and sales process? What is the story? What is the narrative? What is the intention, the approach you're going in with? This is not a place to make yourself wrong. I think every single business owner has probably gotten wrapped around that mindset at some point because it's either taught that way or I think, you know, hey, let's just be honest when maybe you're feeling in a little bit of scarcity or you're feeling like, oh my gosh, I need to book a client or maybe you're feeling not good enough because it's like I need to validate I like need someone to show me and prove to me like I'm good at what I do or this business idea is a good idea right I think we can all when we're coming from that headspace get into a place where we have a different relationship with our marketing and sales so if you're noticing as we're talking through this this is coming up for you this isn't to call anyone out this is to say oh isn't that interesting if that's the case this is the shift we want to make we want to look at first and foremost how can we have a different relationship with marketing and sales just like if i was i'm not a relationship coach but let's just say i was and I, and you wanted to meet your person and we found out oh you really felt like when you were dating right like that you were like feeling like you either owed someone something or they you were going out there to try to get you some and like you're wondering why you weren't having that really great relationship and like that even energy exchange we'd probably look at first well how are you relating to the idea of dating what's your mindset around that like what's coming up around that how do we shift that first so you can have a different relationship a different way you relate with dating same same thing here right marketing is dating like they're pretty much the same thing right marketing is how we date our audience marketing is how we build our relationship with our audience and how we create that relationship so it's strong enough to have that bigger invitation to the next stage in the relationship Lilith says it's really interesting when I focus on marketing to get clients I was active on different platforms that I am now where my marketing is value-based and relationship building with the option of going deeper with me and working with me I think that is really interesting and I think what's interesting there is it's probably not even, I mean, maybe it is about the platform itself, but I think it's just interesting for you to see um, and for everyone, and I just appreciate you always sharing a reflection, but just as for everyone to see where it's like, oh, that's so fascinating when I change how I relate with my marketing, of course it would make sense that I'm gonna wanna show up somewhere differently where it feels easier for me to share value and to build relationships. And I'm guessing wherever you're showing up now, that's just probably a place that feels more congruent for you, more aligned for you, a place where you can just like show up and actually pour out a little bit more and to be able to start and build those relationships where maybe the other platforms didn't feel that way. And I, what I love about this, Lilith, and what I want everyone to hear here, and I think what's so helpful to see is this didn't mean where you were showing up before was like the wrong platform or the wrong strategy or that you were doing something wrong. Instead, it's simply seeing, oh, it probably had nothing to do with your strategy or your messaging. You know, like there's so many things there where we can almost think like it's a strategy problem. And we can see here, oh, sometimes it's how we're relating to our strategy. What is our mindset? What is the intention? What is the lens and the relationship with our strategy and if we can shift that if we can shift the way we relate to our strategy that's the catalyst that shifts everything then on the other side right if i look at dating um we use that as an example it'd be easy for me to say like Ugh, every time i'm on tinder right i just get people who just want to get some and like it's just really transactional but when i see it's the way i relate it's the way I'm relating to dating that's causing me to show up in a certain way, that's causing me to attract certain people, that's causing me to date in a certain way. And when I change the way I relate to dating, I'm gonna show up differently, right? I met my husband on Tinder, which is why I use that as an example. And I've had both 
experiences on Tinder. I've had meeting the love of my life, who's my soulmate on Tinder. I have also had the experience of, you know, meeting some other other types of human on there. But what it what's helpful to see there is it wasn't the app, it wasn't the strategy of dating it was the way i related to the strategy the way i related to the app the way i went in was i um boyfriend hunting was i husband hunting was i really feeling needy or desperate was i coming in with that mentality or was i going in from this even energy exchange through the lens of i want to open and start a relationship and i'm willing to show up and have that even energy exchange the same same we could just like put that onto marketing, right? Are we client hunting? Are we showing up with this energy, with this mindset of, I want to start an open relationship to be able to have that even energy exchange. Lilith says, right, the strategy was almost identical, just an intention shift. Boom, I love you for that. I think that's so valuable for everyone to hear. And I think it's also really valuable to thank you for the evidence for everyone because I, I have just found this even in my business when I think about the first year of business to now, my strategy is pretty much the same, y'all. My results are very different. What changed wasn't my strategy. What changed wasn't that I like found a magic secret like shift in my strategy. What changed was me and the way I related to my strategy. And this is, I mean, this is mindset. This is true in so many different facets, but this is one of those energetic shifts, right? It's changing the way I related to marketing and sales. And one of those things and one of those shifts and I see for myself, I see my clients is what we're talking about here. How can we shift from client hunting, from really transactional, from from seeing marketing sales as a mean to an end or as a like to-do list or this like bad evil thing, right? If we're talking about that pendulum swing where we're like in the energetics and the manifesting or in the hustle side and we think like, oh, it's just this horrible thing as opposed to how can this coexist and how can we see this as really relating to this as I am showing up to start and open and build relationships and do so with an even energy exchange. Okay, with this, I wanna share a couple other things here because, and then I'll share the other energy shift because otherwise I'm just gonna like go off on a, a side tangent because y'all know me, I just like love to, love to go off on my side tangents. But I do have some um, specifics here that I think are really important for today's online space that I wanna speak to. And then I'll read Lilith's comment. Um, actually, I'm gonna read this first. Lila says, also just for f further proof, I get more engagement now and people see and hear me now too, just from the energetic shift. Thank you for saying that. Like, that's the whole thing. I, this is, okay, I'm gonna go one one tangent, y'all, and then I'm gonna, I promise I'm gonna bring us back to focus because I do have some other things I wanna share here. But I talk so much about taking up space, like a boss, um, is my favorite thing to say. And what Lilith, Lilith is describing here is exactly that. And it is that different relationship, relation to your strategy. And I talk so much about how you can literally do the same things, right? Do a live stream, put a post out, but your energy through it, the way you take up space through it is what changes the entire game. This is what I saw when I was acting all the time, right? A hundred people could get the same set of material, the same set of lines. And we can see it's not the lines, it's not the material, the book someone, the job, they get someone, the Oscar. It's how they relate to those lines and how they take up space energetically with those lines, right? How they embody them, how their character is. I can do this live stream with the mindset of, um, I just need to do this to get a client. I'm client hunting. Um, everyone just fucking takes my free shit and doesn't hire me and like the shit doesn't work. Like, right, if I have that energy, the way I take up space here is going to be completely different than if I relate to this from, I love to do this so much. I love my audience. I love that I get to build this relationship with them. Who am I gonna connect with today? Who am I gonna serve today? Who do I have the opportunity to like, oh my gosh, how lucky and blessed am I that I get to show up here and I get to share my ideas and thoughts and that it might, someone might hear one thing and that could change the entire trajectory of their business. I don't even expect anything in return, right? Those are two different energies. I'm gonna take up space completely differently. My energy is going to fill this live stream differently, right? Just like if I didn't believe in myself versus if I did, if I didn't believe in myself and I was like, oh, I don't know if I'm good enough, right? Like I literally might be energetically different in this video than like, like I've got something to say y'all. Like I am here to, anyway, I'm going off on a rant here, but I think it's just so important and something we so often forget. And it's so helpful. My coach, I always shout her out, Lacey Seitz talks so much about solving the right problem in business. And I think so often it's really easy for us to solve the wrong problem in business and to want to solve the live streams don't work versus is it that the live streams don't work or is it the way we're relating to them, the mindset behind it, the energetics behind it um, that just need to shift. Um, okay, off my soapbox, but Lilith, you got me going because I think that's a really important thing. 
So speaking to what we were just talking about, this first shift here with marketing sales and kind of looking at relating to it differently, a couple things I wanted to speak to here that I think is really important with when we're talking about shifting out of client hunting and into building those relationships. And we were talking about that even energy exchange and kind of understanding that an even energy exchange does not mean you put out one post and that means people owe you an even energy exchange of a monetary um, compensation. I think what's really important for us to understand a couple things in the online space look it is just simply true that it has gotten louder and busier and more crowded than ever when it was already getting busy and i don't think this is a bad thing i think this is actually a really really good thing for all of us as business owners when i started in the online space it was like super weird and like you couldn't trust someone online it was like wait, I'm going to like hire some person and give them thousands of dollars. Whereas now that's such a normal thing. We have normalized the online space. I think it is such a powerful, beautiful thing that opens us up. It globally connects us. I think COVID only, I think that was a silver lining to a horrific and horrible situation globally. I think one of the benefits to that is the online space just got way more saturated. We got way more used to that. We got way more used to marketing and selling in the online world. And I think that only serves every single one of you. I do not want you to hear crowded and busy to mean bad. Crowded and busy means there is a demand. That means people are here. That means people feel safe buying here. That is a wonderful, fucking beautiful thing, right? We don't, we don't want the opposite where it's like, there's like tumbleweeds blowing through, but that means there's less competition or something, right? Like this is a very beautiful thing. However, we also have to understand it is a crowded, busy marketplace. It is busier than ever. More and more people are moving to the online space. More and more people are seeing the benefits of being an entrepreneur. I think COVID taught so many people that the corporate space that always felt so safe and secure isn't as safe and secure as they thought it was. And that being your own business owner really is like taking that control and power back and creating your own destiny and your own business for so many people really is more safe and secure, right? I think we saw so many beautiful shifts, but with that, it is more saturated, which means for most of us, for that even energy exchange to build that relationship, to build the no like, and trust where someone as Lil is saying, gets to see you, gets to hear you, gets to know you, gets to feel safe enough with you to hand over money, to invest in you and your services, to understand what it is that you do, we probably have to show up and create more of that energy exchange, right? Probably pour out a little more value than maybe we did five years ago. And that's not a bad thing. Again, I think some people hear that and they think, fuck, now it's harder than ever. I've got to work harder than ever. And they really want us to reframe that as it's not work harder than ever. I think what this means is we have to put our money where our mouth is more than ever. I think this ensures some quality control. I think this ensures that all of us who are saying we're great at what we do and who are asking, I mean, let's be real, most of us are asking some pretty large sums of money for the work we do, rightfully so. I am not an inexpensive coach and I think that that is, I think I'm one of the more affordable coaches for the experience and the results my clients get. However, I have no, like there's no disillusion in my mind that my work is inexpensive. And I think that is a fair energy exchange for the work I do and what I pour into my clients. But I think it's also very unfair for all of us who are charging larger sums of money to forget that that then is asking for a large energy exchange from a stranger on the internet and that we really do have to earn that safety and trust from someone if they're going to hand over money to us right and i don't think it's then a bad thing if because the space is a little more saturated because the space is a little more crowded that it's asking people to step up their game a little bit and it's asking people who are charging large sums of money to put their money where their mouth is right i don't think that's a bad thing i think that's actually a really great thing i think where it becomes comes bad is when we make that wrong or when we have different expectations when we come into the space and I don't think anyone watching this is doing this at all so I'm not calling anyone out here I don't think any of my clients do this but I do think sometimes in our online space there can be this mentality of almost um I deserve it and not I deserve it I mean everyone deserves it but almost this place this mindset of I don't need to do an even energy exchange I'm great at what I do and people should just know that and pay me and what I want to offer is like this is where the pendulum gets to swing a little bit I've seen of course you deserve it everyone here deserves to make all the money and there's more than enough to go around and I mean this in the nicest way possible no one owes anyone anything and 
it's crowded and loud out there. And I think this is where an energy exchange and being willing to show up and share value and build a relationship first and to take that approach is the way you get to earn the energy exchange, the trust, the relationship with someone where they feel like they feel safe enough to give you that energy monetary exchange in return. Right, is this tracking? And I think this can be a very helpful mindset and shift to take with marketing and sales instead of going in. Because I think what happens otherwise is we start to get resentful for our marketing, right? It's like, I'm showing up in marketing, I'm showing up and giving value, why am I not making more money? As opposed to shifting it to, I get to be in this beautiful online space that connects me with thousands of people every day. I get to share my thoughts, I get to share my voice, I get to share this value. I get to start these relationships and build these relationships. And then I get to have the energy exchange when I earn that trust from someone. Like, I think we just want to start to shift this. And then the piece I want us to remember then is if it's more crowded online, that also just means people need to hear from us. They need a little bit of a deeper relationship usually to understand why you're the person or why I'm the person, whoever is the person that they want to give their money to. It used to be, stats used to be, that's why I said things have shifted. Stats used to be, it was like seven touch points, right? If you heard that seven touch points for someone to be ready to buy, right? I think that's a pretty standard thing. Emily Hirsch, uh, Hirsch Marketing, she has a podcast. I think she's really great for some of like the practical marketing stuff. She did, I think, an internal study with some of their clients and they have found it's no longer seven touch points, y'all. It is up to 50 to 70 micro touch points before someone feels ready to invest, ready to buy. And again, we can hear that and think, oh, that's so much work, 50 to 70 mi micro touch points, not massive touch points, but micro touch points, smaller touch points. Or we can hear that and think, great, then I have an opportunity to look at my marketing as let me show up, let me give the energy exchange, let me pour out value, let me be one of the people who's willing and ready to lean in and have those 50 to 70 micro touch points and let me know that that's true so I'm not making it wrong if I've had 20 touch points and I haven't gotten the energy exchange I think I deserve to see actually probably if I'm charging something or if I'm asking thousands and thousands of dollars it might just be that 50 touch points is the even energy exchange that's required to build enough trust for someone to know like and trust me to have that conversation to pay me that compensation. Lilith said, it's kind of like the new energetic minimum to build no like and trust with people. Exactly. I think of it like a portfolio and a preview of, of the experience my clients would get from me. Exactly. And I think, um, I think what's helpful here that I want to reflect everyone, this also does not mean that results have to take for fucking ever. I'm not creating that story. I have clients who, like we're talking micro touch points. You can make 50 to 70 micro touch points pretty quickly. Right? I mean, if you're actually showing up every day in marketing, that's, we say most strategies take a minimum of 90 days, right? To really get traction. That's less than 90 days. So I think we can, and that's also to say, if you build up those touch points, those touch points can compound those micro touch points. So if you let your 90 days add up to another 90 days, add up to another 90 days, right? Someone can land on you and they can consume those 50 touch points in one day, right? Someone could be ready to hire you in one day. So I, I don't want someone to hear this and think, oh my gosh, now it's impossible. Now shit has to take forever. Now I can't book a client tomorrow, right? I don't want us to hear that story. I just want us to see some of the practical truth and realities about marketing and to really then just see what that means in terms of even energy exchange and to stop thinking that even energy exchange means show up once someone gives you $10,000. And to see instead as, oh, it's these micro touch points. And then this is how I earn that even energy exchange. I earn that trust. Um, and that also can be collapsed into one day when I allow my marketing efforts to compound. I'm sure I've shared this with you all before, but I, again, I'm not doing anything all that different in my business than I was a year ago, but I have so much more ease booking clients and filling spots. And it seems like clients pop out out of nowhere. But the truth, truth is, all of what we're talking about here, those micro touch points, I've just been showing up every day for six and a half years, right? So they've just compounded, which means that someone can land on my website and they can consume six years of content. I mean, you wouldn't consume six years of content in a day, but right, they can, they can binge on something and build a relationship with me and my work very quickly. They can have all those 
touch points happen very quickly or i also allowing for the long game someone can sit on my email list that i don't know about for six months consuming those micro touch points right and so like i'm just i just i'm always having someone now i've been in this game long enough to have that happen and i reflect that to you just to normalize because again i see this with clients all the time they want to compare themselves to someone who's further along in the micro touch points journey and make themselves wrong or make their strategy wrong when so often it's they're doing everything right we just want to see and allow for playing the long game and playing for the compound effect of what happens when you keep showing up with those energetics with that mindset with that understanding of what that even energy exchange is to build those relationships to build the no like and trust Lilith says, when I found you, I binge on so many of your previous videos, still am, lol. Um, well, thank you for binging on my content and I appreciate you. And I think that's just a really, really great example, right? And, I, and so I think just for everyone, again, this is not me now, we have the pendulum swing, we go to hustle, which is go crank out 70 videos in one day, right? That is not what we're saying at all. It is saying, let's let the pendulum swing to the middle and have have that approach that sees marketing and sales again is not client hunting but really as that way to build to start and build relationships and really seeing that even energy exchange for what it is and allowing yourself the grace and time to build up those micro touch points and not make those wrong okay i need a little water there hopefully that makes sense i'm just seeing if i wanted to share anything else here um Oh, the, the last piece, and then I'm going to switch to the the um, other part here. But I think this is just the other thing I'm seeing and what I just want to normalize again is, especially if you have a higher ticket offer. Now, again, someone can, I've had people land on my website, hire me the next day, I have a high ticket offer. But that is not a fair thing to reflect unless you understand the context of what we just said, which oftentimes that same person has binge on a bunch of content or they came as a referral, right? Like they're there are these other things that have sped up the customer journey that have allowed for it to be collapsed. But I think in general, something we just want to understand with our current marketplace is it is crowded, it is busy. And I think overall, we're no longer in a time where people have like never been in a sales funnel before, never seen a sales page before, never understood that when they have an opt-in, they're going to get a series of emails and there's going to be a last minute fast action um offer with a bonus, right? Like these are no longer new things, which five years ago, 10 years ago were. And so I think you could have a high ticket offer and move someone through a funnel that way. And it could be a pretty quick funnel and someone would be like, oh yes, like, oh my gosh, this is a quick fast action bonus. And oh my, like all of these things were very new and shiny and they just worked in a different way. All of these, these strategies don't work, but I think we have to understand our consumers, our audience is also just understands marketing in a whole new way because they're exposed to it so much. And I think we're moving into a time, I think this is again, I think this is like cream gets to rise to the top. I think this is a really beautiful thing where we're moving away from the bro marketing side of things. And it's sort of like sales and marketing is no longer about like, how do we have these like snazzy things to like hook someone and almost like trick them into a sale. It really is about building the relationship, building that no like and trust. And I think overall, because there are more options, because people are more um, aware of these things, again, I think this is such a positive thing, but I think it's something we need to understand. I just think for most of us who have a higher ticket offer, it just means in general, our customer journey might be a little bit longer. And that's not a bad thing. Again, I think in general, my customer journey is a, a lot longer. I know many people who hire me have had a six month or longer journey. Again, people land on my stuff and hire me right away for all the reasons we said, but I think it's also very important to understand what is your customer's journey and to take out that want of like, but I, I need to make money tomorrow. I need to make money now. Like we almost like have to put that to the side and see, but right, what are you selling? What is your business need? What is your marketing need? What is your potential client need to build a relationship with you to feel safe enough to understand the value, all of these things to be ready to invest and buy. And not that we can't look for ways to speed that up, right? That's why we do things like conversion events. Conversion events are a ton of micro touch points that are like condensed into a short period of time. So we can speed up that process. That's why we do things like offer free calls to people right that's a way to condense all those micro touch points it's like crack for building and speeding up the relationship process that customer journey and i think we just want to normalize that 
This is something I coach clients around all of the time because otherwise what happens is we sabotage really powerful customer or um, strategies and relationship building that are literally the pathway to million dollar businesses or multi six figure businesses simply because we're impatient or because we want our customer journey for our offer to look different. We don't want to accept that just simply might be the customer journey in your business um, or what's happening overall in many businesses right now. You're seeing this if you look at people's launches if you've consumed if you've bought, purchased someone's program recently i bet you're noticing a lot of launches are being stretched out a lot of high ticket offer launches are being stretched out for this very reason and that's not wrong that's not bad that doesn't mean their business is bad i have a girlfriend who gosh she it's a multi multi-million dollar business um she stretches her launch period out does that mean her million dollars is any less valuable? No, it just means she understands her audience and the relationship and the energy exchange required for that no like and trust. And she doesn't make that wrong. She just leans into it and shows up for it so that she can make the million dollars. I promise you when you make a billion dollars or multi six figures or six figures or five figures, whatever that is for you, the money, the results are just as sweet. And once you get to the place where that's consistent, I've shared this before, you'll start to see it no longer matters how long your customer journey is because there will always be someone popping up at a different part of the process and it'll start to just become sustainable. I just want to invite everyone here to understand this frame so you can play that long game and allow for it. Okay, I do want to share, Lilith says, I think we've normalized the people who jump through the funnel, but those are the exception and not what I would consider normal. So not having people jump through isn't bad and it's not failing. It's just the funnel. Exactly. It's just normal. It's just business. It's just relationship building. Just like we have normalized that people can have a first date and go to Vegas and get married three days later, right? We all have that. We all know that person who like met their person and they got married like super quick and we also get to normalize that most of us are more like me. My husband, like I knew on date one that he was my person. We fell in love real quickly and we dated for a really, for years. Like I think we're probably on the longer side, seven years. We had a seven year customer journey before getting married. That was just our dating funnel. That's not, and that's not any better or worse than the other one, right? There are pros and cons. There are trade-offs to either. That's just simply what the energy, even energy exchange, the dating, like what the relationship, what the customer journey, right? That's just what was needed. Same, same in business. And I think we just all do ourselves such a service when we just start to accept that and start to just have also a different relationship with our business where we just get curious of what is true for me and my business versus what is true for so-and-so and their business and keep our eyes on our own paper and then just start to see, oh, well, this is just what's true for my business. This is just what's true for my relationship. Um, let me show up for that. Okay. Thank you, loves, for saying that. The other, how are we doing on time? All right. Y'all you still hanging with me? Can I, can I steal y'all for 15 more minutes? I always say that to clients when I want to say one more thing, because I do want to chat with the other energy shift here is, and I think this is the piece that's really important for avoiding burnout with your marketing and sales and also avoiding the free forever trap. So that was one of the things I said in the email, which I think we accidentally set out at 3.30 in the morning instead of 3.30 in the afternoon. So some of you probably got it really early, um, which is totally fine. Um, I think so often what can happen is if we understand this first energy shift, right? If we've brought the pendulum back to middle and we're talking about building relationships and we're talking about having that even energy exchange and we're really talking about those 50 to 70 micro touch points and really like, I always think of it as how can I give 10 times more value than I'm asking for in terms of that monetary exchange, right? If we're on board with all of that, I think what can sometimes happen for those of us who maybe are high achievers or over givers or people pleasers or just coming from a place of not feeling enough or from scarcity, right? There can be so many different mindsets behind it. I think sometimes we can fall into this trap of then seeing it's like, oh, well, then this just means I need to give free forever and kind of get into this trap of like over giving free forever. Oh my gosh, wait a second. Now I feel burnt out. How much free shit do I have to give? Why is there no money coming through the door, right? I think this can be kind of the other, like it's almost like the shadow side of leaning into being showing up to, build that relationship and that even energy exchange. And so what I want to offer here is seeing, yes, we are showing up for those touch points. Yes, we're allowing for that customer journey. Yes, all of what we just said. And the other energy shift I want you to play with is seeing where can you take your power back? And remember, part of that even energy exchange is you being available and open to receive the monetary energy exchange and to ask for it. 
what I find blocks so many people is they give, 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 and they expect people to just give back in return, right? They're like, well, it's an even energy exchange. If I just give enough, someone is going to come through the door. And I know I've talked about this in so many different ways, but I, I really think this is one of the biggest hurdles I see for my clients. And what we have to shift to is remembering, yes, the energy exchanges you give. And if you want to have the energy exchange, that even energy exchange return, it's really up to you as the business owner to put on the business hat, pants, whatever whatever article of clothing you want to go with here, and to see it is your job to take your power back and to be really clear on what is that even energy exchange and to ask for it. To ask for it and then to be open to receive it because I think those are two places we get stuck, right? We don't ask or we ask, but we do a little bit of this, right? It's like I'm asking, but uh, I like kind of feel like it's bitchy if I make this much money or it's kind of like... I don't know if it feels okay to work with as many people, right? Like there's so many reasons we don't want to receive. And I think what we have to really see here is an energy exchange is both giving and receiving, but for that receiving part to happen, we have to be open to asking for what we want and we have to be open and available to receive. And so this is, again, not a place to call anyone out. This is a place for awareness just to see where, what is your relation with your marketing and sales with that even energy exchange? And to see, are you falling in a place where it just feels like I'm giving free, 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 and I'm not getting that even energy exchange in return? If so, maybe possibly, could be something else. I don't know, because I'm not talking to everyone one-on-one, -on -one, but a place to look and to check in with is seeing, is there an opportunity for me to shift my energy here, to shift my energy by taking my power back and to seeing it's really my responsibility here to ask for what I want, to ask for and to let my people know what that even energy exchange is. And then it's my responsibility to be open to receive it and to notice where am I not asking for what I want and where am I putting up walls from receiving that? If we go with the relationship example, right? We have to start to ask for what we want in a relationship. It's not fair, right? I'm married. It's not fair for me to be like, I just give all the time. I do all the things. And to sit over here and be like, I give, 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 give. And to be like secretly resentful or secretly feeling burnt out when I've never vocalized, here's how, here's what I want. Here's how I want to be be supported, right? For my, my um, clients who have kids sometimes, right? This can come up and they just feel like they give, 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 give. But it turns out they maybe have never actually vocalized, hey, husband, hey, wife, because um, it can happen on both sides. Here's how you could support me. I could really use some support with you doing the dishes, taking the kids to the park. Could we get a um, someone to come and watch the kids, right? Sometimes we just forget that our partners are not mind readers, just like we forget that our audience is not a mind reader. Your potential clients are not mind readers. And it's really giving your power away. It's really unfair to you and your audience, to you and your partner. I just use relationships because I think it's just such an easy um, parallel since we're talking about relationships. It's really unfair for us to expect other people to be mind readers. We have to get very clear on what is that energy exchange and to ask for it. And this is the catcher. We have to be open to receive it. So if you ask husband or wife to support you by doing the dishes, by taking the kids to the park, by running an errand for you, right? You then have to allow them to do that. You have to be open to receive that. And I think that's the part that gets really sticky for so many people. They feel guilty. They feel like they're being too much. They feel like someone should, just, if they love them enough, they would just know and they wouldn't have to ask. I mean, all of the stories come in here, right? And the same thing is true in business, right? We feel like, well, I just pour out enough value. If I'm just good enough, people would just know. They would just want to hire me. They would just figure it out. Or if I was good enough, people, like, I wouldn't have to sell. Or um, I've it's soul, but now I feel really guilty and bad. This taking all this money from someone, right? It's taking away from someone. So these are just the places I really want to invite you to notice. If you're having this come up, if this is your relation with your marketing and sales, to see this as an opportunity to shift your energy, right? Like this is another relation we can shift, which is how can I take my power back? How can I take my responsibility back to start to clearly ask for that energy exchange I want and to be open to receive? And if I'm not asking for what I want, if I'm not open to receive, to notice where is the resistance, right? If you have resistance to asking, if you have resistance to receiving, that's fine. Welcome to being human. And this is your work. It's kind of like what we were talking about earlier. This is not me now. The platform you're on sucks. This is not me now. Your marketing sucks. This is not me now. You're 
we're going with the relationship example, your relationship sucks, right? This means, hi, welcome to being human. And this is probably the opportunity for you. This is the energy shift we get to play with. This is the mindset shift we get to play with. What do we need to look at? What resistance do we need to move so that it feels really great to ask for what you want to at, to stop asking your audience to be mind readers, right? What do we need to shift so it feels really good to receive? And just to normalize that that is just then the current work to do. That's the right problem to solve, right? That's the thing we want to shift into. Yes, my Lilith says, yes, my holdup was if my content is the best and the most educational, people will just work with me and I don't have to ask. But my audience didn't even know I had anything for them to dive deeper in. It's exactly this. And I think it's just so interesting to see for all of us when this is coming up to see like, oh, why do we even have this story, right? And I don't know if this is true for you, Lilith, but I, I know my first year in business, I totally had the same thing. I couldn't understand why. I'm like actually shocked that people did figure out how to hire me because I did the same thing, Lilith. And I, I would like, I think I put one sales post out in a year, but it was sort of like, you had to consume all of this content put together because I wasn't even telling people clearly what it is I did and what problems I solved and what results people got. And then you had to figure out like, my long ass fucking name, how to spell that, how to go to my website, how to find the sales page. And all the way at like the bottom of this website, you could finally like find a link to book a call. Like it like actually blows my mind that I made money my first year in business, which also speaks to the, how important strategy is and how not important it is if I basically didn't do anything I'm talking about right here and I was still able to book clients. You also, I also want you to see you can do everything wrong and you can still make money in your business. And I made it a lot harder on myself than I needed to, right? And I made it a lot harder on my audience. I made it so much harder for the people I could help to understand that I was someone who could support them, that could help them because I was playing this game of if, and my story was, I think it was a little different than what yours was, Lilith, but mine was really, was twofold. It was one, if if I'm good enough, right? If I put out content that's good enough and if I prove I'm good enough, people will figure it out and they'll just wanna hire me. I was really hoping that my audience would validate my own worth in my business. And I also had this other story that, and this is like a whole nother live stream we've probably talked about taking up space. I really felt like this was kind of the like not being open to receive part. Like I really kind of felt bad taking up space. I like didn't want, I was like really convinced if I like, shown too brightly, if I like own my work too much, if I like said too much, that, like I'm really great and I can help you, that I was like somehow kind of dim someone else's life or light or make someone else feel bad or like diminish someone else's work. And like, this is the work I've had to untangle, but it's exactly what we're talking about here. All that did was me give, 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 right? Hoping for this even energy exchange. And then it was very easy to say, oh, my marketing's not working. My strategy's not working. Or like, oh my gosh, I'm so burnt out or I'm so resentful because I'm giving all this free stuff and I'm not, I'm only like, I'm not making the money I feel like I should. And then to create just to only further the story that it's not good enough, all of those stories I had and said to see, oh, wait a second. No, it's because of those stories. I'm making it nearly impossible for people to hire me. I'm making it nearly impossible for that energy exchange to happen because I'm not taking my power back. I'm not owning my worth. I'm not owning my work. I'm not speaking to it clearly. And I'm not making a really clear ask, right? I'm not even open to receive. I'm essentially asking people to do the work for me. And so that's just the shift I want everyone to play with here is just to notice where that might be coming up and just even notice where are you expecting your audience to be a mind reader or where are you asking your audience to do the heavy lifting for you? Right? Where are you asking them to validate you? Where are you asking them to figure out what it is you do? Where are you asking them to figure out how you can help them? Where are you asking them to have more trust in you than you're willing to have in yourself? Right? Where are we outsourcing all of our power and putting so much responsibility onto our audience? And how can we take that power back, that responsibility back? And remember, as a business owner who is charging, most of us are charging premium prices for our work, um, and even if you're not charging a premium price, you're still charging money in a, you know, we're in an economy where people are really thinking about their money. How can we take some of that responsibility back and say, these are all of our, like part of the even energy exchange here is seeing what is your job as the service provider, as the person providing the, uh, the product? How can you own that responsibility and see that as a part of the even energy exchange? Well, it says, oh yeah, my receiving was turned off. When someone actually gave me money, I cried because I didn't realize the trauma I had around feeling supported by other people, even though that's why we're in business, to make money, LOL. Um, I love you for sharing that. And I think that's actually a really important thing for us to close on. 
and thank you so, so much for sharing that. Cause I think that's, that's exactly it, right? We think this is about business. We think this is about money so often. And what we forget is if we're blocking receiving, if we're blocking being supported, if we feel like we can't ask for support, right? I've shared this so openly here and on the podcast. For me, so much of the work, just similar to Lilith, so much trauma, so much, I mean, therapy, coaching, all the trauma, healing, um, it's not like, oh, I don't want to make money. It's not like I have a money mindset issue. It's for so many of us, there are deep layers under that for why it doesn't feel safe to be supported, why it doesn't feel safe to be seen, why it doesn't feel safe to have that even energy exchange, why we have, why we feel like we need to overgive, why it doesn't feel safe to be supported. All of these things often have deeper layers. So I want everyone hearing this. We're talking about these concepts and if you're noticing some of these things, so I keep saying, please don't make yourself wrong. This is a place to have awareness. So much compassion and grace for yourself. And it's simply, how do we shine a light on some of these things and to see, oh, well then this is the work. This is the place for me to create safety. This is the place for me to heal. This is when we're talking about the energetics, right? And we talk about manifesting that other side of the pendulum. That's not just like, how do I sit here and chant, clients will come to me and pay me money. Oftentimes it's this deep work here where it's like, how can I do some of the deep healing needed? How can I create safety so that I can shift the very energetics I need to relate to my marketing differently, to relate to my sales differently, to relate to this even energy exchange so I'm available for an even energy exchange. So it doesn't have to be so lopsided because if it's lopsided, it's often lopsided because of there's usually something under the surface and that is human. I don't, I mean, I wouldn't have a job if that weren't human. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't still be working with my coach four and a half years uh, later if that weren't human. So I want us to normalize that as human. Um, all of us humans have stuff that, you know, everyone's stuff is different, but everyone has stuff. Um, that stuff tends to be stuff we continue to work on, right? And like, just to normalize that. And what I want everyone to also hear is if you have stuff, that also doesn't mean you can't make money now, right? I made money with stuff my first year in money, um, in money in business. I made money my second year in business as I worked through some of that stuff, right? It's just the more you work through this, the more you start to shift the energy, the more you start to shift your mindset, the more you start to solve the thing under the thing that is kind of doing a little bit of this or putting up the wall, the easier you make it, the faster the results can come in, the bigger the results can be. The more you open yourself up to receive, right? The more capacity we have to hold clients and money and joy, the more, um, the less resistance we have, the less roadblocks we put up, the less sabotage we put up, the less we have to have the, you know, like kind of ups and downs in business. But I don't want anyone to create a story where it's like, now you have to go fix a bunch of stuff or now you're broken or like, none of that shit is true at all. I don't subscribe to that we are all always in this journey we're always moving through it and these are the opportunities for all of us that just make it a whole lot easier so you don't feel resentful so you don't feel burned out so that you can love your business so you can make money on your terms so you can keep making more and more money in a way that actually feels good and sustainable well this says exactly she says healing is a journey not a destination so it's not an after i'm healed then i'll make money exactly that there is, and that is, this is not what today's live stream is about, but that is a piece I want everyone to take away from this, this live stream, any live stream we talk about, none of this is like, once I fix this one thing, once I do this one thing, then I get to make money. You get to make money today. Like, look, the bro marketing, the hustle car tour, like that works too, right? Like all of these different things actually work. Um, it's not to say you can't like do all of these things and still make money. It's this, this is the way, these are all the things we get to be on a journey that make it a lot easier, that make it feel a lot better, that feel a lot more regulated in our nervous system, that help us work with the clients we love, that help us, again, stretch our capacity to receive and to hold and to keep and to have, right? So we're not sabotaging and making money and spending it just as quickly as we have it. So I don't want anyone to have that story. I love what Lilith said here. Said here, healing is a journey, not a destination. So it's not an after I'm healed, then I'll make money. Um, that is exactly it. And no one is broken. No one needs to be fixed. That is not the, the shit we're here to do. We just get to all be in this journey and we just keep getting to have things get better and better and easier and easier. So I hope this was valuable for you. I hope everyone here and on the replay can really see that we just wanna to start to look at how can we relate to our marketing, to our sales a little differently? How can we have the pendulum swing a little bit more to the middle? 
And remember, we're gonna stop looking, we're gonna stop hunting for clients and we're gonna stop seeing marketing sales as this transactional thing and look at it more as this long-term way to start and build relationships and to really look at it as this even energy exchange, but understanding what an even energy exchange actually means and what that means for us on the business service provider side of things. And then to remember part of allowing for the even energy exchange is to ask for what we want and to be open to receive it. I hope this is valuable. And if you have questions, drop them for me. If this is something you want more support around, if you're like, wait a second, this is interesting. I know I could use help with the marketing and sales and the strategy side of things, but I also think maybe I could use some support with the mindset, the energetic side of things, the thing under the thing, and some of what might be coming up for me and the way I'm relating to my marketing, the way I'm relating to my strategy, the way I'm relating to my sales process so I can make more money, so that I can be on that journey that makes things easier and easier and better and better, so I can be open to receive more clients and more money. That is exactly what I do. I would love, love, love to connect with you. I will drop a discovery call call link below and we can chat about what it'll look like to work together and one of my spots as they become available for you. Lily says, thank you for this topic. Thank you for being here. Thank you for always like just for the, it makes it so much more fun to get to chat back and forth. And thank you for the nuggets of gold you shared. I thought they were really valuable. So thank you. And thank everyone on the replay as well. I love you all. I'll be back next week with another live stream for you. Bye.